we're back with Nick versus Frank in the finals of the Mystery Chaos Draft 2018. I'm with Aaron. Aaron, how you doing, man? I'm doing excellent. I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be quite the match. Chaotic. Here we go. So we got Primordial Ooze versus Kakusho. Now, what, what, which card do you think is better? <laughs> <laughs> well, judging from my commentary from the first couple matches, uh, I'm going with Azor is going to win it all. Yeah, Azor is a pretty, a pretty big beating. So a 1-1 one, one with a cumulative upkeep or a 6-6 six, six Sphinx's Revelation on his stick? <laughs> oh, there, there's a dragon. We're going to have a little, uh, yeah, a little flying showdown. So the, the mono red uh, doing what it does. With Casting the, uh, artifact colorless two ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say getting on the board early, but it, if you want to act like that you go ahead <laughs> we got a shimmering grotto on frank's side going in for two so the shimmering grotto this is like just the regular like filter land that gives you a color list but you could make it with one other mana any color you want that's exactly right aaron oh no so th and nick stuck on lands early yeah got but nothing but the uh the two one he's got a lot of action though there's a lot of action there we have a <laughs> Pillory or Pillar of the Damned, I think it's called. Uh, which is one red, two damage to any target, so he'll be able to... Uh, still, he still has plays. And there's also a Searing Blaze in his hand. Searing Blaze could um, do some work for sure. Because as soon so, as he hits that land, that's uh, six damage. Divide between two targets. Now, uh, all the people that voted for EB to win and voted for Sean to win, they're they're no longer uh, <laughs> they're no longer in it. Uh, but all the people who voted for Nick to win or voted for Frank to win, uh, you're still in it. Uh, and whoever the winning player is, all the people who voted for that player will be entered into a draw for a prize pack, which includes signed cards from everyone involved in this as well as uh, a bunch of sealed booster packs. So you could either play anti-league with your friends using it, you could just crack them for value, you could uh, maybe use them to kick off a uh, some sort of draft of your own. Unfortunately, Nick is at the point where he has eight cards in his hand, so he's just going to cast the Pillar of Flame targeting Frank. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes. And Frank and, uh, has been playing nothing. He's been playing uh, Land Go. So, uh, Frank's he, he's, his, his, his life total is getting down there. He's playing six, drop, six drops dot deck, right? I just drew the uh, two drop with the... Syndic of Tides. Yeah, extort, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Syndic of Tides has Extort. Which is still, to this day, one of my favorite commander abilities. Like, when you're playing multiplayer, Extort is just so great. One damage to everyone all the time. It forces these bears to, like, become targeted, and people people gang up on it. It's so funny. There's the land drop, landfall. Three damage and three damage. Oh, but we got a trap. Whoa. It's refraction trap. So if your opponent casts a red instant or sorcery spell. Specifically red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it's main deck. This is game one. Oh. You ouch. can pay a white instead of three and away. He could have paid three and a... Oh no, he couldn't have. No, he couldn't have, but... <laughs> and prevent the next three damage that a source would, uh, of your choice would deal to... Um, a p permanence you control. To another permanent you control. Mm -hmm. If damage is prevented this way, it deals that much damage to target creature or player. So, so he killed his own so he stable, and yeah. he dealt three damage to Frank? Yes. There we go. And Frank could not extort as well. No, he could. Oh, he did extort, yes, did with extort. the black mana. Yeah. I was thinking he needed the white, but yeah. Look at that. Frank not missing an opportunity to do No, nope, and now he has a six mana, and here come the bombs. Kokoshu to start things off. The uh, evening star. I'm pretty upset about that, that he didn't have that extra mana to extort after casting Kakusha. If it was me, I might I might have held on to it. Yeah, you really want the full value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of just jamming and play as soon as possible. This is loose play, Frank. Come on now. <laughs> All right, and we're following up the Kokoshi with uh, possibly a uh, wall of like mud or whatever that thing is, clay. <laughs> <laughs> Zero six. Primal yeah, this Primal. is where mono red 
it just looks so ugly. You look at your hand, you look at the this 2 2. Doesn't do much else. No, I mean, a, a 2 3 mana 2 1 gains a power when attacking. Like, this 5 5 beater in the air that also has a death trigger. Nick's in big trouble. He is, absolutely. <laughs> the only way Red deals with that is Active Trees and Fling. And I don't think I saw a Fling going around. Unless he picked it really high. Deputized. Active Treason, a Kokoshu, and Fling it would be. That would be a sick, sick play. Especially in Chaos, do you have to pull that off between two different sets? Honestly, I, <laughs> I didn't see it, but if he pulls it off, this will be mm -hmm. one of the greatest matches. Uh. Yeah, because that's like 10 damage. Take 5 from Kokoshu, fling him, 15. It's 15 damage, and you gain 5 <laughs> life as a red player. That's awesome. You hear that, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> you hear what we're expecting from you? We got a fireball for 2. And, and the on. menace gets through. Yeah. 3. Frank has his life total at 9 there. Is that, that's not correct, though. That's not correct. Uh, okay. he, once he realized Nick was keeping track of his life, he stopped keeping track. I see. Uh, the... It, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, Frank attempted to block the creature with menace with his coastline. Uh, is it Chim Yeah, a Chimera, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Nick was like, no, you can't. I, G I, I think Frank does this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> where he pretends to not know the rules of the game mm -hmm. and tries to do things and I then see. when his opponent reminds him of the rule he goes oh oh okay that's, that's fine right. that's right well Sean was trying to uh, well and successfully did so hide his morph in the background of his playmat that's true <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah watch your friends here yeah, yeah, yeah. keep one eye on your cards <laughs> one eye across the table there Look at this. Like, all of Frank's creatures in his whole deck have flying. All of them. The Syndic of Ties didn't, but it might as well have, because Extort is kind of like getting through with Evasion. Mm-hmm. Well, during the draft portion, I think that's what we commented on. Evasion is extremely powerful. I could, I could block your stuff, you can't block mine. Whoa, and the Primal Clay comes down. That is pretty badass art, I gotta say. Look at that skull. Terrifying. It's the only way that card inflicts fear on their opponents is if, when they look at the art. Now, do you think you made a flyer? I think you could change it. Oh, no, it's when it comes into play. Yeah. Uh, I guess, you can you I make guess, a 2-2 two -two flyer or a 3-3 yeah. three -three or a 0-6-4. There is another card similar to this that you could pay mana and change it. But uh, I guess it was just a chump blocker for a turn game. Oh, my goodness. More flyers from Frank. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I think that Frank drafted a pretty solid deck. Yeah, all his cards are seem very good. Oh, like he, he isn't playing the jank that that most people have to play in chaos drafts, right? Like all his creatures, even if they are low power toughness, at least have some evasion. Mm -hmm. And um, and he he took advantage of the fact that it is a slower format, so he's getting away with having all these all these bombs at the top heavy. Like he did nothing for the first four turns there against a mono red deck and wasn't punished at all. Exactly. We've got triple right. mountains from Nick, and oh boy, he's got two cards, five mountains. <laughs> and he isn't, he isn't casting an Ancestral Recall here, he, he is taking a mulligan. I thought he was just going to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah. Out. Frank didn't see. He's like, I got too many mountains, I'm going to pick up two more cards to equal things out. Did you, okay... This is super casual, but did you ever play like maybe at the lunch room at school or something, where the, I think they called it mana bombing, where if you had like all seven lands or something, you got then you got a free mull mm. or no lands. That's how we would actually play. When you got no lands, you showed your opponent your hand. I have no lands, and you got a uh, mulligan. Because when I first started playing, there was certainly no I choose to mulligan and go down to six. I don't think yeah. that existed. I'm sure that didn't exist. The uh, the one we used to do is because we wouldn't have a lot of time to play at lunch, and we'd always play these huge multiplayer games. Yep, yep. So what we would do is, uh, on your opening hand, you can play every land that you 
True. <laughs> that sounds really fun, actually. That sounds like a great way to speed up those games. I would just play like these lunchroom games that, yeah, it was like eight to ten of us, and people would just cheat heavily. <laughs> Because it was yeah. the only way anything anything would ever happen it was if somebody just <laughs> snuck that land down there. It was like everyone had a cheaty face, so unless you got caught, it was fine. Like everyone's like okay with it. Oh, Frank's playing his sideboard card, Flash Flood. More on Chronicles. Blue. Destroy target red permanent or return a mountain to his owner's hand. Seems pretty strong against next deck. Yeah, all of that with the main deck trap. <laughs> <laughs> Frank was uh, setting up for this. He knew there was going to be a mono red player, and he was prepared. I mean, it's a great card, even if somebody's playing like red plus something like red green or red black or whatever. Yeah, it's it's essentially red elemental blast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Destroy target red permanent man. No mess around. One mana instant. Yeah, yeah, that's a good card. The hatred in those early sets was phenomenal. Like, flash fires, what was it? Just destroy all planes? planes? Tsunami, yeah. destroy all islands. Oh, man. There was also, that, that's when magic was magic. There's, there's also <laughs> if you won a game then, you were dealing with some serious stuff, you know? Like, you were karma. Uh, and let's not forget the old circle of protections. Uh, so Nick is choosing to play that Skirk Commando face-up. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want to... I guess, use the mana. He feels like he's going to get through. And he, he has some more plays coming up. Well, we see an act of treason there. So he feels that... Um, but you yeah, can't see, hit the creature if you act of treason. Not that creature, but see, Frank is now attacked. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it becomes renowned, so it becomes... Uh, gets plus one, plus one, so he won't be able to deal the two damage to it once it gets through. I was thinking he would act of treason the new creature, then deal the two damage to this thing and kill it, but... That doesn't work. It doesn't. He could have other plans. He hasn't played the... He's got the pillory, maybe? No. Yeah, he has He has a lot of plays in hand. He has a lot of a lot of action. He's got the prodigal sorcerer. The red prodigal sorcerer, whatever. Mm -hmm. Pyromancer. So he could tag team. Do two with the Skirk Marauder, one with the... And Frank does nothing. Leaves four men open. Was, so was there a blue the man here? in there? No, no. No, three planes. Hollow Hinge Spirit. Oh, this creature, it has flying. <laughs> and flash. And I get to fog. <laughs> Boom, done. Seems good. It yeah. seems pretty strong. And Frank hasn't even gone to his six drops yet, and he's already swinging back for five here. Oh, uh, but it did So count. the raid? The raid does trigger, even yes. though the uh, creature was removed from combat. At one point, it did attack. All right, we got a good game here. I really like the flavor from Ixalan. I know that's unpopular to say right now because everybody's Ixalan out, but I, I like the flavor. I like the dinosaurs and the pirates. Oh, it was super cool. I had a lot of fun drafting Ixalan. Um, and this is kind of why I think Riz is just going to this one set block and move on because although everyone seemed to have like fun with it, I, I really liked it. I had a good time. But um, after playing it for eight months or however long the set has been out, it just it just gets stale. Like it's okay. I've played with these dinosaurs. You understand what the cards do. Like let's move on to something else. And that and the next one is luckily Dominaria, which I'm super excited for personally. I can't wait. These cards look like so much fun to play. These uncommons are busted. Yeah. Do you see the? I I mean like people are going to be very familiar with Dominaria by the time you're watching this. Like the set will be out and everything. But uh, I really like that one in a blue one three Umazawa. Oh, that makes all the creatures unblockable if yeah. they have one power or one toughness. Or one toughness. Or yep. one toughness. Your ball lightning is unblockable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, we got the Akum Battle Singer card that you said was your favorite card in this whole draft. That's incredible. Look at this. Look at it coming in. Is this swing a golf club? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a nice altar. <laughs> Bringing my know. nine iron to this battlefield. <laughs> Deal with it. Frank's deck is really solid. I, he deals deal with so much. He has a pacifism, the, the Vindicate on the board. Uh, we know he has Kakushu in his hand as well. It's a, it's a really solid deck. He's got that in his hand, Kakushu? I, I believe it does, yeah. 
Spoiler alert. <laughs> I didn't see this, it. Is, this is what you get for watching <laughs> watching people's hands. Alright, he's just gonna happily take that five damage. Say, listen, I got this on lockdown. I'm not that worried. Oh, and the tunneler. tunneler. Yep. Some inevitability comes down. He's got the combo. And that is a pretty decent combo if Frank did not have the Vindicate. So Nick was a little stuck on lands there, but it could have been a pretty sweet play to to grab the sliver with the Act of Treason and then sack it. Ooh, yeah, if he had the lands for it. Yeah. That would have been nice. But Mono Red, one of the advantages of going Monaco is that you play less lands, so you don't get flooded. Uh, but then you, can't, you don't always get to the six mana, do crazy fun things level. I mean, he doesn't normally need six mana. It just so happens that... In this situation, there is a card that requires you to pay mana once you gain control of it. Yeah. So, what does Frank have here? It looks like one swamp and four planes. Oh, no, three three planes and an island. Yeah, I think that maybe this will be the last time I use the full art lands in these videos, because it is kind of hard to tell, especially when I'm editing, but three, it does look like three planes, an island, and a swamp. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessary the full art lines. It's just the the that particular island is very lightly colored. Yeah, it it is. Oh, uh, that's one of my favorites. That that artwork is pretty incredible. Because if you look at the lens that Nick is using, like those are very easy to tell that they're mountains. Yes. Because he's mono red. <laughs> <laughs> his play mat is red. His cards are red. His lands are red. You know what? Just for fun, though, he is playing Urza's power plant. <laughs> just to show it off. Just yeah, to he actually something. is for real. Yeah. But uh, he. Hey, you know, maybe he's going to come down with, uh, with a Thought Not Seer at any given moment. Oh, and can just you imagine? <laughs> bust things up. <laughs> or whatever, the 5-5 five, five Haste Trampler. Uh, Reality Smasher. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a name of a card. That's one of my favorite names. <laughs> so Nick just took a bunch of damage here. Uh, yeah. Frank pacified the Skirt Commando so it can't get in there with the Tunneler combo. Nope. <laughs> Nick needs to stop. He's got to turn no matter what. He's got to turn. Right? Because he can block the creatures on the Yeah, he, he started kind of chump blocking here. But he's um, got to deal with the... He has to deal with the 2-2 two -two flyer. Yeah. Uh, oh, looks uh, like he's got the primal clay. Yes. So, so he'll be able to, to block there, but... Or at least trade that, it for the sliver. That renowned 4-3 is putting in a lot of work. How much damage has that dealt by now? So probably 11? 3 yeah. plus 4 plus 4, yeah. Yeah. That card is really good. 2 and a <laughs> yeah. white, the 4-3. Alright, Primal Clay is on the battlefield, and it is a 2-2 two -two flyer. Pass the turn to Frank. Let's see what Frank's got up his sleeve. He's wearing those big sweaters. He always wears big sweaters to these events. Uh oh, the choking oh. tennis. I'll just cast sleep. How's that sound? I'm tap all these. Yeah. One, two, three, four. And Good that's match. it. There it is. Frank, the first two time winner ever of the Mystery Cast Draft 2017. Thank you so much, Aaron, for coming out. And of course, that was tons of fun. And congratulations, Frank. You, you're, you, I think you had the best deck looking at them all. You know what? I'm going to go uh, talk to Frank and see what he uh, has to say about the tournament. Sounds good. So I'm here with the champion of the Mystery Cast Draft 2018, Frank, Team Flock of Nerds. We did it. <laughs> we worked it, right? Yeah. We subbed in the right cards. We uh, we didn't have the right judgments on the right, uh, like, anyways, we cheated our way to, to the top, right? <laughs> did you think you had what it took to become the first ever two-time champion of the Mystery Cast Draft? Uh, yes, I always knew that I did. <laughs> Tell me about the deck that you built. Like, what what worked for you? What were the, some of the packs that really stood out? Um, there was the last, the, I think it was the Masters pack, or Conspiracy pack, where it was like, uh, there's... There was uh, Evolving Wilds, a, like, there was, it was a pack with the Peacock, 3-4 uh, Peacock, okay. that I didn't actually end up drafting. Like, there was just all sorts of consistency in that pack. Um, so I think I got three really solid cards from that. Uh, there was a Sphinx I drafted, which probably helped me win two games. The Kakusha, which helped me win two other games. 
I saw you uh, struggling with that first pick. You had the Sphinx and the uh, Ravenous Chupacabra. Do you think you made the right pick? So I picked the way I picked because I thought that the Sphinx is a stronger card, uh, but it almost certainly meant that I was going to be in three colors no matter what I did. But I thought I would be able to get more fixing, but there really wasn't that much fixing in these packs, which is surprising because we we played so many modern packs, I thought I would find some fixing eventually. Um, no, maybe it was the wrong pick, but... Uh, <laughs> you won! Yeah, you know, it's just that it, you can get a 2-2 two -two and you can still lose, because, like, it's... Uh, I thought our decks would be so full of junk. <laughs> that there were no good targets for the Chupacabra? Yeah, or that, like, if I just on top with that Sphinx and reload my hand, like... Even if all I did was that with the Sphinx, like I could win a game just based on that, because I saw, our, based on the last few times, sometimes the decks were not that powerful, but the decks today were like really strong, really strong decks. Who do you who do you think was your toughest competition? Who had the best deck, and you felt like you were lucky to get through it? I don't know. I, I wasn't really at risk of losing very many games. Was it just because you're really good at Magic, or was your deck just was exceptional? Both. Yeah, the deck was really good and you're really good at magic. The right? pilot was great, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think two of my opponents mulliganed, uh, which helped. I was always on the draw, which I think was the right call because I think that the format's really slow and if you can just have more cards than your opponent, you'll eventually win. Uh, final question, Frank. What do you have to say to all the people that voted for you? I mean, you told them in the beginning that they should have voted for you, right? Yeah, it was really the only logical choice, so if we're strictly being logical, <laughs> then... <laughs> um, yeah, uh, congratulations to both of us. <laughs> so right here, the person who wins the uh, prize pack uh, was somebody who voted for Frank, and their name is right here. Can you believe it? Right there. Yeah, I believe in you too. <laughs> <laughs> For Frank, Sean, Nick, EB, and everyone here at Three Kingdoms Games, thank you all so much for watching, and take care, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Catherine. Bye.